I started doing Mujengo back in the year 2001 after dropping out of Tanga. So doing Mujengo, and then the year 2002, I talked to a certain head teacher and he accepted me. Hmm? I proceeded to Nairobi to come and do Mujengo. I did Mujengo. In Nairobi, I survived with Mujengo. People were being slaughtered in the slum where he was living. And I saw it, oh, this is very terrible. And even in Mujengo, it was very hard. Keeping money for yourself, for up people, support yourself, to buy clothing was very difficult. No young man, no matter how great, can know his destiny. He cannot glimpse his part in the great story that is about to unfold. Like everyone, he must live and learn. And so, it would be for Matthew Owl Nomiori, the famous man. Matthew Nyamlori and my childhood life, I was born in Bomet, uh, in the night vision, Bomet uh, County, yes. Uh, my childhood life was, uh, I, as I was growing, I was introduced in hardship because my, my parents were partial laborers in those side of Pretty Valley and you know, the, our native land was from Nyansa, Lua Nyansa, that is Nyakach. So, <coughs> We proceeded, I proceeded with uh, my learning, uh, knowing that uh, one time I, I'll attain, but the background, my, uh, I was coming from humble background. Unfortunately, there was a, a 1992 in the tribal classes after the introduction of multipartisy in Kenya. And being that we were lose in Kipsigis, you know, we were to displace. My parents went back with other siblings, and we remained uh, in Rift Valley. We remained in Rift Valley. I know a, a certain administration police officer uh, took, took me and my brother, uh, my brother, the one I'm following. And uh, we, uh, I started staying with this administration police officer, helping him in milking and uh, <clears throat> Weeding, weeding the farms uh, when I'm free and I'm going at the, at at, uh, at at the expense of me going to school. I had to work for me to go to school to, to hit yani to get residential. So I, I I accepted because I had no option. So that is the introduction part of my hard hard life. It started in that way. So I continued staying there until I started for my KCP. That was the year 1998. His story has kept people gazing, a heal and cry situation, many asking how and why someone would spend 22 solid years in primary school, sitting KCPE for a record nine times. But as always the case, no one else can always see with the same lens one sees with. This is Tours Half Tales with Mondia here. And we present a candid talk dissecting the mystery behind this story. Indeed, Matthew's toes have tells. And I didn't go there due to lack of fee. The year 1999, I proceeded to repeat at Rongo Primary School. And Rongo Primary School, uh, I stayed a bit with my hand before she was given transfer. I started doing Mujengo back in the year to. 2001 after dropping out of Kanga. So doing Mujengo, and then the year 2002, I talked to a certain head teacher and he accepted me hmm, to repeat in his school, Kitere Primary School. I went to Kitere Primary School to receipt for KCP. That was my third attempt, third attempt. I scored uh, 387 out of 500. I was admitted at Rapogi High School. I was elected to join Rapogi. I couldn't go to Rapogi because of fee. Mm, you know, by then we were living in grass touch house. Uh, getting the next meal was next to impossible. He takes us back his journey of life to Nyakach, from whence he traces his ancestral roots. Bits by bits, however, 
He explains how he found himself speaking fluent Kipsigis. Born just like any other normal child, healthy, strong and full of life, determination, dreams and strength. The future was appearing bright. It was a tale of parents escaping the scathing hunger and what otherwise they might have rightfully believed was an attempt to run away from fate and find a better environment for their children. But maybe they were wrong. I proceeded to Nairobi to come and do Mujengo. I did Mujengo. In Nairobi, I survived with Mujengo for like well, one and a half years. After that, uh, there was Mugiki, Mugiki during that time, that was the year 2007, the, the election of uh, PNU and ODM. So people were being slaughtered in the slum where he was living. And I saw it, oh, this is very terrible. And even in Mujengo, it was very hard. Keeping money for yourself, for upkeep or support yourself to buy clothing was very difficult because you are traveling far away. To go do Mijengo. Then when you come back, you, the fair has already re raised. Were there no relatives that uh, could have assisted you with your education back then? Relatives were there. And by the way, you cannot uh, rely on relatives for survival. I had relatives. And even the MP by then was my neighbor at home. I went to them severally. I went to churches to ask for a symbol around it to carry on my education. Unfortunately, no one was willing to help. And you cannot force somebody to help you. But finally, God opened the door through James Monkey and I'm here now. Fast forward, he presents with clarity his first step to the journey of education that unknown to him would take 30 years to finally materialize on the 23rd day of July 2021, in the year of our Lord, as he finally graduates from Kenyatta University with a bachelor's degree. This is the story of Matthew Aol Nyamlori, a 38-year-old who spent 22 years in primary, sitting for KCPE nine times and finally graduating. Uh. Um, I told you we were living in a grass touch house. We were living in abject poverty. Getting the next meal was next to impossible. So we were very poor. We used to go and uh, fetch water during the rainy season in a neighborhood who had iron, 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 iron roofed house. You see, it was a terrible life. So my parents were not able at all to support anybody in a local even getting buying for me a shoes i took long time before we are in a shoes no so after securing the sponsorship with the wings to fly how was the life in secondary school was it smooth or how, what was the experience so, uh, i was very stable in high school mm. wings to fly is the home of every needy student the way a son of a minister is being given shopping is the way a scholar in wings supply is being given shopping. It's the same. Very good. And uh, how was life in Kenyatta University? How did you get to join K? K are qualified. I, I was was it wings supply? No. I use help. Uh, no, wings of fly is for secondary. They don't support somebody in tertiary apart from those who who join leadership and get scholarship to go to international university. But here, a local university, we use help, and they help you to apply for help national uh, the, the, the help loan. I use help loan. I was awarded forty five thousand per year, and it used to cover fee full time. Yeah, and I was also looking doing writing articles to people, doing some few things so that I can, because now I'm skilled, I've done from four and I can, I do anything to get my income to, at least to, to keep me moving in the university. You know, when you have gone to university with the interactive nature, you are a skilled labor, you can write anything, you can do anything, you can even do marketing, and you get money, you, you should not sit back now, you wait to be held, you have been given the power to read, you have the knowledge, 
So I used the knowledge to get some amount to keep me moving in KU. It's true that you are one of the student leaders in Kenyatta University. And here I became the Congress of Kilimambogo Hostel. I was one of the 14, 14 Congress, uh, 14 KUSA Congress uh, people, person. So I became a Congress person of an, uh, a residential hostel in KU. Oh, oh okay. And uh, how, how, was, how can you describe the university life until graduation? It was uh, tough as in hard to get meal because you know I am a student at the same time I have to take care of my blind mother at home my mother lost sight in the year 2013 I have to look for some money to send for shopping at home I have also to look for some money for me to eat in the university that was the rough part of it but everything was okay I can't complain about that and my graduation my graduation was the best I, I was the happiest person graduating after struggling this journey started back in 1989 in Nasser school and now I'm completed telling the whole world that everything is possible no matter what no matter your background when you initiate a process and trust upon the law God will make it happen and God has made it happen to me I am now a graduate Postgraduate plan, it depends oh, on what I graduated. My plan, I'm looking for somewhere to do something so that I can get some money to do business and register for my master. Or if I can get somebody who can support me do my master, still I can re register even tomorrow, start my master in KU or in University of Nairobi. So it depends on the resources. When I get resources, the earlier I get resources, the earlier I register for masters and then later on for PhD. Uh, but I am requesting, I'm looking power to get the formal employment at least to enjoy a bit of uh, my sweat and then I start my doing the program the project in my life what if you get a scholarship to further your education outside the country would you opt to it do is, that it is okay I love to do that because nobody uh, nobody as a scholar I cannot uh, turn down an opportunity I can't turn down an opportunity and uh, as you end up this, are you planning to document your life story in a book or something to do with it? The book is uh, almost ready. The book is almost ready. Oh, you're okay. working on something already? Hmm. Okay. I, I think that is good and uh, many people will get inspired by your story. Thank you so much for showing up. It means a lot. Asante sana. Thank you. Mm -hmm.